Very good. Do you know if anybody else is showing up? Have you heard from anybody? I haven't heard from Courtney or Sebastian, no. Okay. All right. Uh, or anyone else for that matter. Okay. Well, then uh, we will get started. Um, this, um, let me go to this screen here. Um, this is uh, something that I teach. No, I don't want that screen there. Did I go to that bear. screen? I don't want bear. I don't want My that. Hairy man. I want uh, this screen. Wait, that's not the one I want either. Come on. I'm still learning how to do this. Uh, which one is it? This one, okay. Um, I'm not gonna uh, be teaching you a college class here tonight, but I'm gonna giving you uh, the, at least the intro here is a part of stuff that I, I teach in um, uh, my critical reasoning class, a little bit of it in my um, uh, philosophy class. Uh, and uh, so we're gonna start out tonight with just a little tiny thing here about semantics. And I'm sure you've all heard that word before because you've heard people say, well, that's just semantics. And when they say that's just semantics, what do they mean? I don't know. But you've heard it before, haven't you? Yes, I have. Yeah, that's just semantics. Well, semantics is the uh, study of meanings of words. Okay, so uh, it's, uh, it's also called significance, but heart, no one ever calls it that. Um, so there's, uh, semantics is uh, essentially what uh, words mean and um, how do we how do we figure out what they mean and so as I start with uh, in, my, in my college classes I start out with these four words right here uh, bear the Bob eight okay now all of us know what those words mean don't we yes okay we yes do. okay what's the word bear mean bear is an is a mammal um, I actually learned a new word today when I was getting ready for class. It's a plantigrade mammal. Ooh, I never heard that word before. Plantigrade mammal? Plantigrade. Plantigrade oh. means that the uh, ball of the foot and the toes are all on the, foot, the, the ground at the same time when they walk. Oh. Oh. I'd never heard of that before. So, you know, not, not, all, not a lot, lot like dogs, they walk on their toes. Okay. So, um, anyway, um, so there's a lot of different meanings for the word bear. Here's one here. Here's a, oh, like here's, here's a 25 different words for how it's used as a verb. And then, of course, here's a few uh, how it's used as a noun. Plantigrade carnivorous and omnivorous mammals of the family Ursidae, having massive bodies, coarse, heavy fur, just kind of like me, and uh, relatively short limbs. <laughs> yes, almost rudimentary tails. That's, yep, that sounds all like me. Okay. Uh, I was I was uh, teaching this in critical reasoning earlier uh, this quarter, and I was asking the students what a bear means. And one of the kids said, "A an older homosexual male." <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I said, "Okay, I get. I I've not heard of that, but that's okay." So anyway, yeah. um, so these are all, uh, and this is actually isn't all. There's way more than this for the word bear, but this this is a whole bunch of possible. Uh, meanings for the word bear. So you could use it this way in sentences, okay? So uh, it has a range of meanings, the word bear does. Now mm -hmm. let's go to the next word, the. What's that mean? This is the harder one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, usually the, ball, uh, the best thing I can tell you is that the is usually a word that uh, that is signaling a specific object or thing it's, it's making something specific it's all it is yeah in uh, uh, in grammar it's called a definite article okay. uh, an article is just a short little word and it's a definite article that that uh, um, makes you're not just talking about let's say if I said uh, I went and saw a car today uh, it'd be different than I went and saw the car today okay so just makes it definite just not it's not just uh, any old car, but it's, there's a specific one in mind when I use the word the, okay? Most people are, are flummoxed. They don't know what the word the means, but they certainly know how to use it in a sentence. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right. Uh, let's go to Bob. We know what the word Bob means. Well, yeah. Well, Bob is a name, and it, uh, Bob could also be like something that... Well, like bobbing for apples is what I'm okay. thinking. So like something that sure. floats while you... As, as a verb, okay? 
it has several several meanings as a noun. You know, first one is uh, nickname for Robert, like uh, my mom's brother. Or like mm -hmm. Robert Plant. What? Or like Robert Plant. Or like Robert Plant. I, uh, I'm sure you are a big fan of his. His hair is kind of his hair is kind of like yours, except more curly. Yeah, there are people who like who uh, who will say that like uh, who will say that I'm like Robert Plant's kid or something. <laughs> yeah, you do kind of favor him, and and the hair helps. Okay, so a, it's a it's also a style of short haircut for uh, men, for women and children. Not very popular anymore. But when I mention this in class, most women, most of the ladies say, oh, yeah, that's right. There's a bob. Okay. A docked horse tail, which I've never used it that way. A dangling or terminal object, like the weight on a pendulum or plumb line. So I've used it that way. Uh, a short, simple line of a verse. I don't, I've never used it that way. Never heard of it that way before I read this. A knot of worms or rags on a string. I don't have any idea why you'd want to have a knot of worms on a string, except if you're going fishing. Or a float for a fishing line is the bob. I never heard of it called a bob. We called it a bobber, but um, I, sp I guess it's called a bob too. A bobsled is called a bob. A uh, bunch or cluster. A court to cut short as a verb. Um, all those things, okay? So it's got all those possible meanings. And, so, and those are really different, aren't they? I mean, you know, these up here with bear, you know, they sort of all, at least the verbs, they all have to do with kind of moving something from somewhere else uh, is, is what it has to do with that. Even if you're, let's say, to bear a child, you're carrying the child. Uh, so it's, you're moving that child from um, uh, one place to another, but you're, it's inside you when you're doing it. Okay, so they all have kind of a basic meaning here, but these have a lot of different weird ones that it's hard to know how they connect. Um, what's, the, the, what's the basic root thing that that they're, you know, like most of these is like bounce and a short haircut bounces more than long hair. So maybe it's just something that, that, uh, that bounces, okay? And now we'll go down to, to eight. Okay, past tense of the form to eat, to take into the mouth and swallow for nourishment, to chew and swallow, okay? And when I do this in my uh, uh, classes, uh, they, they, I ask them the meanings and they say, well, it's just like this, they take it out and swallow it. I say, when you take it out and swallow it, is that, it's every time you do that, is that eating? If you were to no, say, drinking. yeah, because you can you can take liquid in your mouth and swallow it, and that's not eating. That's drink. That's drinking. So what is it? How is it different when you're eating? Usually you're chewing it. Okay, okay. Uh, to cons to consume to make a hole by gnawing. Never heard of that one before. Uh, so anyway, there's lots of different words for that. Okay, uh, a lot a lot of different meanings. So when we're looking at these uh, meanings here, these, uh, this is what's, what's called the range of meanings for these words. So they, they all have several different meanings they can have. And when we list all of them together, that's the range of meaning or what's called the semantic range of a word. Okay, it can have a lot of meanings. And almost all words are that way, okay? So what do, what do words mean like here? Bear the Bob eight. They actually don't mean anything because to mean something, they have to have a context. Right now, when these words are just out there by themselves, all they have is a range of possible meanings. Got it? That's all they Got have. It. Okay, to make, to make these words have an actual specific meaning, you have to then give them context. You have to uh, give them context. The word context comes from the uh, uh, Latin, uh, which uh, comes from the Greek. It means to weave together. So you weave these words together with other words, then you have a context. Okay? Because even though we have these words, uh, all we have is, is possible meanings. And we can't co communicate with each other with only possible meanings. When we, when we think and when we talk and when we write, we write with specific meanings, typically, unless you're trying to be a weirdo. Okay, so um, got me. Are you with me so far? Yeah. Okay. Now let's go to. Okay, I didn't open this one up yet. Hang on. You know, I'm actually I'm actually taking a critical reading course in the fall. Oh, are you good? Yeah. Okay. That's just when I will. Well, actually. The summer will be will be when I finally begin my pursuit into philosophy. Nice. Ooh. Yeah. 
Did you guys hear that the Nebraska universities are going to be offering free college starting in the fall? No. Really? My, yeah, my dad tagged me in this thing, and it, I mean, it looked legit. I think it's from the governor or whatever, whatever and and yeah, if you make 60000 or less in your household, just college is for – you got to be full-time, though. So, so – so that's that's for sure. Or that's just they're talking about it. I think it's for sure. Um, yeah, I'd have to look into it a bit more to confirm it for myself. <clears throat> Let me see. Wow. No, yeah, I, I mean, if that's, if, if that's the case, I imagine I'll be finishing my degree because yeah, at yeah. ketv.com. I mean, maybe maybe the heck I'll I'll go get some more then. Uh, yeah, like that. I wonder how that's going to affect, I wonder how that's going to affect the, uh, uh, you know, all the other colleges. Because if, if right. they, you know, who, uh, so why would someone go to, to UNO and pay or as opposed to going to UNO and it'd be free? Right. Especially if it's online. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a done deal. So I guess I'm going to finish my degree because I, I pay for it with my taxes. So I bet I'm going to benefit from it at least. No kidding. Okay, pardon the um, the wait here, but I'm uh, I forgot to open up these two. Uh, here we go. All right, almost ready. So now I will share this. Hey, you see this? Let's close that so we don't have to look at it. So you see this Excel sheet? Yes, my precious. Very good. Okay. So um, this is uh, a, uh, it's the, the, the focus here is on a verse in Luke twenty two thirty seven that says uh, in the New English translation, it says, for I tell you, that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. He was counted with the transgressors, for what is written about me is being fulfilled. Okay, this is uh, essentially uh, a, uh, uh, a, a Luke, uh, well, and this is Jesus talking too, uh, in, in Luke, that um, he's going to be, um, you know, turned over to the Romans, and he's going to be considered to be a naughty guy by the Romans. And he's then quoting from the book of Isaiah. And, and the quote he says is, and he was counted with the transgressors for what is written about me is being fulfilled. So he's saying, not only am I going to be turned over, this is what the book of Isaiah uh, predicted that would happen. So this has to be fulfilled. Got it? Got it. Okay. So, uh, uh, so this is the English translation of it. And so we have the word, uh, it, transgressors is what the New English word, uh, English, uh, the, the New English translation says. Okay, so if we go back to the Isaiah passage, which I'm not going to go to, uh, um, uh, or we can go to the uh, the Masoretic text, which is the the, the, the Greek. Uh, it's, the, it's the Hebrew uh, that actually it's kind of weird, but it, the the Masoretic text is the is the text that most uh, Jewish people would use today, even though it actually was first put down uh, quite a ways after Jesus. But the Masoretic text has this as the word here uh, that's highlighted down here. Can you, can you tell which one I'm highlighting? Yes. Okay. Okay, that's the word down there. It's pasha. And uh, so that's the Hebrew word. So if we go to this page here, we look up the word pasha. Uh, when uh, uh, Isaiah said it, that word pasha had four different possible meanings. Wait, it's more than four. Six. It could mean apostate. Do uh, you know what that is, an apostate? Someone who falls away from the faith. Uh. So it could have meant apostate. Could have meant offender. Could have meant a quarreler. Someone who argues a lot. 
uh, a rebel, someone who is uh, shaking their fist at authority, or a revolter, someone who is actually trying to overthrow authority. Those are all different meanings, aren't like they? Like the tongs. Yeah. So those are all slightly different meanings, right? I mean, there's a root there that they're kind of a naughty person and they're kind of uh, going against the rules, that sort of a thing. But there, there's different meanings there for that one word. So that Hebrew word only had six possible meanings. So it had a very pretty small semantic range. Got it? Okay. Got it. So when um, uh, in, in Greek, when, when Luke then translated that, he translated that uh, uh, Hebrew into Greek. And he chose this word here, the word uh, anam, anam, anamon, anamon. Okay? That's the Greek word that he, he chose uh, that would match up with the meaning of the word pasha. Okay? Now, that Greek word, anamon, has the meaning of transgressor, unlawful, or wicked. So it's got uh, only three meanings. Okay, so it's a, it's, it's a, a what, what's called the semantic range is pretty thin. Okay, it doesn't have any, it doesn't have any meanings to it. So, but, uh, so, uh, uh, but he picked that word, uh, uh, anamon. Now, just by comparison, we look at the uh, Latin Vulgate, which was uh, uh, Jerome translated uh, the Bible into Latin, the, the Hebrew, uh, the Old, Old Testament and the New, and, and he translates it into Latin uh, with the word here, uh, uh, scleret, scleratus, okay? And that Latin word had several different uh, meanings. It can mean accursed, can mean criminal, desiccated. Here's uh, one of Dustin's favorite words, um, flagitious. <laughs> I, I never heard of this word before. No, I've never heard it until now. Uh, before this morning, I never heard this word before. Uh, flagit flagitious. Or uh, heinous, <laughs> heinous, infamous, or knavish. I like that word, knavish. Profaned, sinful, villainous, and wicked. So there's nine different uh, meanings for that Latin word. So you can you think about this. Yeah, um, uh, Jerome is trying to translate this uh, passage from Luke, and he has the word there, the uh, animon, animon. And he's saying, okay, what Latin word should I pick? Okay, because he there's he, he could have there could he could have picked several different ones. There's a lot of different words that overlap, but he picked this one here, uh, uh, the scler scler scleratus, is the one he picked. Even though that one also has a uh, nine different possible meanings. Got it. Got it. And then finally, when you get to the English. The word transgressors, and I forgot to open one up here. Hang on. Uh, hang on just uh, one more minute. I did have this other one to find. Where to go, where to go. Is this the one? Nope, that's the one I have open. Hang on here. It's not the one I want. I should have had this open. I'm, I apologize. You're the one that I want. Woo, woo, woo. 
You're the one that oh, I want. I know why. I think it's not a. Uh, I don't think I put it as a a uh, Excel document. It's a. <laughs> it's a um, Word document. That's why I couldn't find it. Here we go. Go back to it here. So I just went and uh, grabbed this. Um, this is uh, that very passage, Luke twenty two thirty seven, in a whole bunch of different uh, translations. Dang. So there's about 20 of them here, okay? So look at how that word is translated by different translators. Transgressors, rebels, transgressors, 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 outlaws, criminals, transgressors, evildoers, criminals, transgressors, 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 wicked, lawless, transgressors and transgressors, lawless again, transgressors and lawless. Okay, so the, the word that it's, that, that the, uh, the, all the different groups of people, and when, when someone does a translation, almost always it's a group of people working together to do it. And so when these, uh, the, the most common translation of this word is the word transgressor. Okay, so now we'll go back to what I was looking at before, except it's, you don't see this. You, you, just see, you see what I was just seeing, right? Yeah, you, that doesn't switch over. I'll have to switch here. So, the word transgressor here um, is the English word. Are you seeing this now, the, this Excel sheet again? Okay. Right. So the word transgressor yes. here, uh, I just did a quick um, uh, look at the different synonyms for transgressors, of which there are 90. 90 what? synonyms. Yes, for transgressors in English. Okay. Abominable, atrocious, bad, barbarous, base, beastly, bent, black, black-hearted, blasphemous, contemptible, corrupt. Okay. Uh, so you have uh, a lot of words in English, lots and lots of words that they could have picked from. So, but most people, when they, m most of the translators, they looks like they came up mostly with transgressors and wicked uh, or lawless. Those were the three they, they stuck in here. Uh, they also did si uh, sinners. So lawless, sinners, and wicked are the words that, that most often show up in, uh, across uh, the translations in English. Those four words, lawless, sinners, and wicked. But they could have used a whole bunch of them, but they use those, okay? So, um, but if we go down here and look uh, at, and this is what I was doing this morning, this is how boring my life is right now. I spent all morning doing this. Uh, out of all these different words that were chosen here, the different meanings of them, uh, from the uh, Greek to the Latin, there's only one that they have in common, uh, the English word, like wicked. Uh, from the Hebrew to the Greek, there's only one that they have in common. From the Greek to English, there's just one word they have in common. So uh, there's, there's not a whole lot of possibilities when it comes to that. It's always when you get to the English, because the English has a whole bunch of words in common with the, the way it's used in these other uh, translations. So uh, when you go back to then this, um, this these verses here, uh, and these, you know, when, when you read these, uh, just, you know, in your head, the sentence that says, he was counted with the transgressors, he was reckoned among the lawless, he was numbered among the sinners, he was reputed with the wicked. Those are clearly four separate sentences, aren't they? Okay. Not only, not only the meaning, not only the word, the English word, uh, transgressor, lawless, sinner, sinners, and wicked. The verb that's used here we have counted, reckoned, numbered, and reputed. We got four different verbs of how he was how he was uh, uh, counted amongst the wicked. Okay. Uh, and and the, uh, the the point being that uh, in even in what we've here, we, I just looked at all this stuff here just for the word uh, transgressor, and I could have done the same thing for the word um, uh, reputed or or counted, and I'm sure I would have come up with a lot of other things too. 
but I only had, uh, uh, I only allotted myself four hours to study for this. So uh, four hours, this was what I came up with. So um, uh, and one of the biggest um, complaints, I guess, uh, that I, in my classes that are leveled, and also just in my experience uh, uh, in my life as a Christian, is people, they, they find fault with the uh, Bible because the Bible has so many different translations. It makes sense. It does to me. Yeah, it does to me too. Yeah, Especially considering that, well, and, and that when it comes to like different sects with which will vary by certain beliefs, then most likely what they're going to do is try to is publish certain copies of the Bible where that may not be said be identical to the original piece. Right. Certainly. Yeah. And there, there certainly are some uh, uh, sects that do that. So when it comes to my mind is like the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, they have their own version. Uh, you know, they have the, um, uh, what is their version called? The new, a the new, what is that called? I'm not sure. Too bad Noah wasn't here. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I think it's the, the new, whatever it is. So they have their own translation. Um, but, um, most of them, most of them don't, most of them just use, they find a translation and they stick with it. And of course, uh, since the, um, uh, King James came out, you have a, a fairly across the board, um, uh, calling on the King James as the correct one. It's like mom's, uh, uh church that her and dad went to for a long time. Uh, they never read from anything for the King James in that church. King James that was the only correct translation. All the rest were, well, not wrong, but they had errors in them. The King James was error-free, uh, according to uh, that church, and they were they were uh, uh, fairly conservative Baptists. That's a nice way to put it, and um, uh, that's pretty darn. The, uh, you, you see that an awful lot in conservative Baptist churches, where they they really really land on the. Uh, King James as the only reputable translation to use. Okay, and uh, you know I, it's it's a good translation. Actually, when I was in uh, grad school, uh, we we did uh, we, we several uh, we had uh, we had one whole semester. That's what we did. We would take verses that were used in the Old Testament, and then also uh, 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 referred to or quoted in the in the New Testament. And, uh, and then we compared how, uh, the, just what I'm doing here, we compared the translations. And uh, when, you, when, when you see what uh, Jerome did with his Vulgate in uh, 382, he did a really good job. He did, he was a very good translator. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, when, we, when we did real fine comparisons of, of the Greek and, and the, uh, uh, the Hebrew with that, he really was good. And the book that he came up with, the Latin Vulgate, is the primary text for the King James Version. So um, the, the Latin Vulgate um, is um, the text that it used because uh, he had a lot of different, you know, documents and everything that he could have, that he had available to him. But what he created here became known as the, the, the Textus Receptus. That was the, 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 um, the accepted um, translation, the Latin translation, and so when they, when they, when King James ordered uh, a, a, uh, the Texas Receptus uh, to be translated then into English, uh, you have it's not exactly because they had a few other uh, texts available to them, but it's overwhelmingly taken straight from the Latin Vulgate. And the King James is, in fact, a pretty good translation. Uh, I don't believe it's um, divine. I don't think that that God was up there making sure that the people who translated it were, you know, they were putting it uh, exactly the way God wanted it was like he was doing to the Apostle Paul when he was writing Romans. But they did a good job. And if you take out the, the, uh, the archaic language, uh, and just update the the language from the uh, 1600s to now, you still have a pretty darn good translation. 
So like I've told people, I don't have any problem with them using King James at all. Matter of fact, if you want to uh, say it's the only one, I don't care. Uh, what I would what I would suggest is to not not put people down because they're using a different one. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I don't think that's quite appropriate to do that. Um, but uh, it really is, you know, I, I would never discourage anyone from using the King James because it is a, uh, uh, it's a fine translation. But there are other fine translations also. That's the way I put it, okay? So when we look at here, these four different uh, uh, renderings, he was counted with the transgressors, he was reckoned among the lawless, he was numbered among the sinners, and he was reputed with the wicked. If you were gonna, if someone were to say, I don't understand what the Bible says because it has four different translations. How do you respond back when you have these four right here? My answer back is, that doesn't say a whole lot different. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. It's they really not very things. much different, okay? I mean, these, these, these are, you know, there's, they, these are all synonyms, you know? They're not exact, they don't have exactly the same meaning. You know, wicked doesn't mean exactly the same as lawless. But, you know, um, they're not that far apart either. And so if I were going to uh, 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 create a, a doctrine on uh, what, the teach, uh, what the teaching of the Bible is about uh, Jesus when he was delivered over to the, uh, to the, to the Jews, what, uh, how was he seen? I'd say, well, he was, you know, he, they, they saw him as a bad guy, <laughs> okay? I can just say that. They saw him as a pretty bad guy. These aren't just bad guys. These are pretty bad guys, aren't they? Okay, like, you know, like, like when's the last time you call somebody wicked? Mom, uh, you probably, mom, you probably do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got Beth to laugh on that one. <laughs> okay. Um, but how, when's the last time you call somebody a sinner? Okay, that, that happens a lot. So, but these words, are, they're certainly not, uh, uh, they don't have the exact same meaning but they have a, we all know that they really do, or sort of the same thing. They're talking about a pretty bad guy. So he was uh, considered to be uh, in the group of pretty bad guys. If I, were to, if I were to translate this, if I were to do a, a Jim Scholl translation, I, I, I would have said that, and especially if it was like a, a new common language translation, I'd say he was uh, considered to be uh, amongst the group of a pretty bad guys. And if I wrote it that way, it would actually be pretty consistent with the underlying meaning of the text, right? Because these don't really say a whole lot different. So the fact that there are, there are some slight differences, to me, I don't even care. And that's what I've done with people who come to my Friday night Bible study uh, for years. I tell them, uh, go get yourself a parallel Bible. Get one that has several different uh, uh, translations in it. I have several of them here in my office, uh, uh, parallel Bibles. So if you're kind of wondering what a, what a verse really says and you don't have any knowledge of the Greek or Hebrew, then you know what? Go get a parallel Bible and you can do just what we're doing here. And you can say, ah, oh, kind of seems like, seems like uh, he was thought about in a way that he was, he was in a group of, in, in that group of uh, uh, pretty bad people. So when you read through each of these uh, parallel translations, you can do the same thing. We say, I, 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 can, I, I can get what they're saying here. And it's really not very complicated. And it's really not uh, what, what I think people do when they, when they look at the different translations of the New Testament. They look and say, well, because there's so many translations, I don't know what it means. And no one knows what it means. And that's just actually pretty darn silly. <laughs> okay? Because you know what these mean. They're not, it's not very complicated. It doesn't, you don't have to be a, you know, a, 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 you know, a super smart person or a super educated person to see that these four different uh, uh, renderings here are about the same. Okay. And so as long as, as long as you don't, uh, and you're not pursuing on learning any Greek or Latin, then uh, doing a parallel translation like this works just, ju works just fine. Okay. Okay. Make sense to you? Yes. Okay. So, um, uh, 
So how do you do this? Even if, you, even if you're doing it in, in uh, 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 English, how do you go about then, if you're, if you're reading a verse, okay? Now let's say someone uh, read a verse and said that, uh, oh, hey, I was reading the Bible, it said that uh, Jesus was a sinner. I mean, I, you, you, do you believe Jesus was a sinner? It says right here, he was numbered with the sinners. And this was, he's, he's quoting from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is a prophet of God, and he's saying that, that uh, Jesus was a sinner. So what do you think about that, huh? Yeah, I can, can you see people doing that? Sure, sure, because standard theology is, Christian theology is, Jesus never sinned. He wasn't a sinner, okay? And so, so okay, so if someone says that to you, you can just say, you can just answer him back and say, oh, just shut up, you poopy butt. You could do that, you know, uh, to, 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 just to close him down. Or you could say, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go look this, look this verse up. Because, you know, I'm going to be honest. When I read it on the surface, it kind of says that he was numbered with the sinners. Okay, now, it, it's not saying he was a sinner. He says he's numbered with the sinner. So I'm going to have to go back and actually look at that verse. And I'm going to compare that with other verses to make sure, because people who want to, they have an agenda uh, that they want verses to back up their own little points of theology, they will do this. They'll go find the translation in, in that particular theological question that fits them best. And you can do that. You know, if I wanted to show that, uh, I don't care, that uh, uh, John the Baptist um, was um, a, uh, I'll just make something up, that John the Baptist um, was a, um, he loved to, he loved to uh, uh, gamble. Okay. All right. And they, and they have a verse that says, you know what? That's not how I think of John the Baptist. Uh, and I've, I've read, you know, I've, I've read the, the, the four gospels several times and I never got that sense. So this verse that you're using here in this one particular translation you're using, uh, um, I'm going to have to go uh, do a little digging to see exactly uh, why, why they're using that particular uh, uh, semantic, that, why there's, they chose that uh, semantic possibility for the word as opposed to some others. Okay, because that's what it comes down to. Because as we saw here with these other things, they have lots to pick from. Lots to pick from. Words that they could put in there. So the question is, how do you pick? I mean, what if, what if instead they, they put uh, uh, that he was uh, uh, counted against the, the degenerate? He was, he was uh, numbered with the degenerate. That'd be fine. That word degenerate to me means kind of the same thing. Degenerate person to me. The, is uh, in my mind the first word that comes to my mind is a synonym to degenerate is wicked. Okay, all right. How about well, I'll test you guys out. When someone is diabolical, what's the first word that comes to your mind as a synonym? Evil. Evil. Okay, very good. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, what about uh, felonious? What? I don't even know that word. Oh, to me, criminal is that <laughs> one who one who commits uh, a felonies. Ah, That's what that means. Okay. Uh, what about uh, godless? Ungodly. Ungodly? Okay. What about impious? You don't know that word. Impious uh, usually means they're, uh, they're, they, do, they do dirty things, that sort of a thing. Okay. Here, here's mom's favorite. Low down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's low down. Okay. It's funny, Mom. I was uh, uh, talking with Annie a few nights ago, and uh, I uh, she was talking about something, and and, and I said, "Well, I, I just hope they get their comeuppance." And she goes, "What did you just say?" I hope they get their comeuppance. And she says, "What are you saying?" <laughs> comeuppance. She said, "Are you making that word up?" No, I'm not making that word up. She says, "What does it mean?" I said, "I know how I use it. <laughs> I use it to mean." that they're going to get what they deserve. Okay. I said, but you know what? I've never looked the word up. And so I went and looked it up. And uh, uh, the, the, the uh, correct way to say it is comeuppance. P-A-N-C-E. They're going to get their comeuppance. But I'd never used it that way. I'd never even heard it that way. I'd always use the word comeuppins as a slang for comeuppings. They're going to get their comeuppings. And so I was using the word comeuppings, which there isn't even that word. But I was using a slang for comeuppings. 
not even not even comeuppings. So anyway, uh, and I was telling <laughs> my students this story here a couple of days ago, and there were a couple of them they'd heard the word before. Both of them, though, they heard it though they were homeschooled. You know, so it must be it just must be a kind of an old timey. You've heard it before, Dustin. I yeah, me well. Beth said she's heard of it, but she's homeschooled, so that doesn't prove a point. But I've heard of it, and I'm not homeschooled. Yeah, yeah, you're just you're just uh, you're just brilliant. So, you know, oh boy, yeah, you, you have it. You have a very broad vocabulary. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. So anyway, we we I could go through these and and on uh, you know one by one, and I could ask you just to write down a uh, on a sheet of paper. Write down the first word that comes to your mind as a synonym for these. How many do you think you guys would all come up with the same words? Not many, not many, because we have different ideas in our head what they mean. There's, there's slightly different meanings in all of these words. None of these mean exactly the same. He's a scoundrel. He's scoundrelly. Never heard that word before. Scoundrel. <laughs> yeah. Sorted. Sorted is, that's pretty bad to me. Something is, someone's sorted. That's, that's getting up. That, that's like, you know, that's like people from, from, you know, like Plasmouth. Um, uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Plasma? Plasma, yeah. Uh, uh, stinking, Stink. sullied, tainted. Okay. So all these different words are uh, synonyms for transgressors. And all of them would be probably okay to use. None of them would be wrong. So what there's when, whenever someone's doing translation work, they're just trying to fit, fit a word that they think mostly matches up with the, the, uh, uh, the uh, Greek word or the Hebrew word that was there to match that up. Well, how do you know? Because the person who wrote it down the first time, even, uh, even here in the Hebrew, they had, he had uh, um, uh, uh, six different possibilities, what, what meaning he, he could have had. How do you know when, uh, uh, when Luke was, saw the word uh, pasha, uh, why did he pick um, anemone as opposed to other words? Why yeah, did he so do that? He had a reason, didn't he? Sure. He had a reason for it. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is show you how I do this. I'm not saying it's the right way, but here's how I go about figuring this stuff out. And I go about it differently than a lot of people. And again, I'm not saying it's the right way. But this is something I'm going to encourage you uh, to think about doing. So now I'll get another document. This one here. Okay. So principles. And I don't know how that got on here. That shouldn't be there. Why is that red thing on there? I don't know why it's there. Oh, just got my author here. Okay. Principles of lexical semantics. Okay, so uh, lexical just means putting them in a list, make, making a list out of them. Okay, so you're gonna make a list of all the different possible meanings of the word. Um, this, this is to me the, the, the five principles that I've used over the years to show how you should pick out the word. Okay, how do you pick out a word? So I'm looking at that word, uh, pasha, and I'm thinking, okay, it's got several different types of meanings. Uh, now I'm gonna try and put it into Greek and I know all these Greek words have several different times of meaning uh, too. But what I really want to do is I want to have whatever was in Isaiah's head. Because every word that's, that, that comes out that you write down or that you speak has a, a matching uh, a notion in your head. There's an idea in your head that you're trying to communicate. So uh, the goal of translation is try to figure out what was in that writer's head and see if I can find another word so that when I write this translation and a third party reads it, what's in their head is going to be exactly the same thing that was in Isaiah's head. That makes sense? Yes. So, so I'm going to draw a really stupid picture. It'll be stupid. Yes, it'll be stupid. Like so, Weird Al. Uh, but I do, this, I do this on purpose to look stupid. Otherwise, people think I'm, I'm flawless. Um, Okay, so here we have somebody's head, and here we have somebody else's head, and here we have a person's head who's not exactly in the middle, but I can move it around so that it is. 
ta-da, to modern, technolo modern technology. Okay, so this, we're gonna have this person's head over here be Isaiah. I don't want that little thing there. I-S-A-I-A-H. It's the Aya. Isaiah. Okay, and then this is going to be, I don't care, let's have this be Micah. Since okay. I, since that's a nice biblical word. Okay, but not, not the Micah of the Old Testament. This is the Micah of, of um, um, Catholic school fame. Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> and then this is going to be a, uh, just a translator. Okay, someone who's translating this. Okay, because let's just say Micah doesn't know Hebrew. Can we operate on that principle? Okay, actually, let's do this from the Greek. Let's say Micah doesn't know the Greek. You not know the Greek, Micah? I don't know the yeah, Greek. You know, if, you, if you, you know, go get a doctorate in philosophy, usually you have to know at least two dead languages. Oh, dang. Yeah, usually you have to know two. Well, part of my BA is I do have to take 16 credits of foreign language. Yep, yep. So, uh, no, I guess I'll use Hebrew because Isaiah wrote in Hebrew. Okay, so we have a word over here. Uh, and let's just call it something, um, a word. Okay, I've got a word there uh, in uh, Hebrew. And the translator wants to find a word that matches up whatever was in Isaiah's head. And this is Isaiah's head right here. The word's in his head. Isaiah then took that word and wrote it down. Um, he wrote it out. So now we have a, a written word. It's written out. This word now becomes written. Okay. And again, that doesn't help Micah because he doesn't uh, read Hebrew. Okay. So the, this written word then has to go to the translator into the translator's head and then out of the translator's head into Micah's head. And then finally, we have to have, hopefully, get out of there. I don't want that arrow there. Get out of there. Click the undo thing. Or just uh, Oh yeah, I forgot there was an undo up here. Okay, if I was smart, I would, I would use that. Okay. You are smart. Um, so, uh, we have word here. Okay. So the goal of, of all language is to get something out of someone else's head in, uh, from someone's head into someone else's head and have the meaning be the same. Does this make sense to you? Yeah. Sure. So if, um, uh, let's say uh, 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 Dustin said to Beth, uh, Beth, I love you. And uh, she answers back, I don't know how you use that word love. Love uh, is a word that has a very broad semantic range and there's like 17 different meanings it could have. I don't know how you're using it. You need to clarify that to me. Then what's going to happen is he's not going to say that anymore to her. <laughs> he doesn't want to clarify the meaning of the word love to her every time. But you know what he does, and you know what she does? They both operate as if they're using the word the same, don't they? Aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're living their life as if the words they use, they have the same thing in their head for them. When in reality, we all know that we have different words in our heads for things. Just like if I were to take go back to that list of uh, that English list of the 90 different words that are synonyms for transgressor. And I were to uh, have each one of you write down what you think is a synonym, the chances of us having the same synonym list are next to nothing. We have different synonyms in our head. So, uh, so we, we are we're really risking it. Uh, uh, we're, we're involved in pretty risky business when we say something and expect someone else to have the same thought in their head uh, when we're done talking. Because you never know, do you? You just don't. They might be saying something totally different. But we trust 
that we are using the words the same. That's how we operate. But you never know. You'll never know for sure unless you're able to get inside someone else's head and uh, see what symbols they have in their head for their words. And I kind of don't think that's ever going to be able to happen, that people are going to be able to do that. So we just have to say, you know what? Uh, we have to uh, just do the best we can, okay? It's not an, exact, not an exact science, but it's like this. I have a target. And hopefully, oops. And I have a smaller circle, and I have a smaller circle, and I have a smaller circle. So, uh, as long as uh, if we're having a conversation, as long as uh, in our conversation, uh, uh, let's say when when Beth, when uh, Dustin says Beth, I love you, and his, in his head the word means something here, and her head the mean word means something over here. They're not that far off. Okay, as long as they're not that far off, it's no big deal. They don't have to test each other's uh, lexical semantics, do they? It's not necessary. They just operate as if they're using the words the same. Because it's not that big of a deal. Except when. Except when it is a big deal. And you know when it's the biggest deal? I'll tell you when it's the second biggest deal first. When it's the second biggest deal is when you enter into a contract with somebody. And, uh, or you're, you're signing a, a, a contract. Because who wrote that contract up? The contractor. Nope. The company. A lawyer. Oh. A lawyer. A lawyer wrote it up. Why did the lawyer write it up? Something legal. Because they wanted to use the exact language to communicate what needed to be uh, communicated, right? Sure. Yeah. I remember when I was in law school, there was this uh, uh, case, I don't remember the details of it, but there was this case where uh, 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 they went to court over the uh, where a comma was in a sentence. And the judge, the judge had to rule for one person because the comma was here rather than this other place. And it made a huge amount of difference, like, like millions of dollars of difference because of where the comma was. And not only that, but they had to go and, and figure out what the comma rule was. Because, you know, like in English, you might not know this, I'll just tell you for fun, uh, because I know it's gonna be boring. Um, if I have a list of words like, uh, oops, why am I doing that? I'll, I'll do it this way. Uh, X, Y, Z, A, B, C. So I have a list. Okay. Do I need a do I need a uh, a comma? Um, uh, uh, there between B and C. Mm -hmm. uh, a thumb says yes. <laughs> some, wicked, some wicked thumb says yes. Okay. I need a comma there. Do I need a, do I need a comma and there? Yes. Okay. Why do you say such a thing? Because otherwise it'd be one, two, three, four, five items the last item being b and c as a whole or as a, as a sort of okay. as, a, as one thing yeah this is this is a uh, uh, general ac accepted rule uh in english in the united states so dustin has a uh, grand education having grown up and studied at a uh, an awesome high school fremont high you went, <laughs> you went to the you went to the public school. i don't know that that's where i learned that Oh, okay. Where would you have learned it then? Well, I, I actually just was recently studying about the Oxford comma for work because I was looking at our leases and like our contracts and stuff like that. So. Yeah. But see, the military doesn't use the and. Uh, they don't use comma and. They have huh. a different rule. Okay. But my point being that when... Um, you are uh, communicating, and it's something that's extremely important, like a contract, 
like if you're going to sign a contract to buy a house and then you sign the contract and you, you know, uh, you, you, uh, give somebody several thousand dollars down and then they come back and say, Oh, uh, uh, this contract was wrong. Um, sorry. And I don't have to give you your money back. Oh, sorry. That's a big deal, right? Sure. So, so the exact meaning of a word and, and how, how clearly it's communicated is unbelievably important in, in, in some places in life, but in average everyday life, we don't care much about it, do we? Most people don't anyway. Most people don't. I'm, yeah. the, weird, I'm the one of the weird people that do. Uh, and so I, I typically, if I'm having communication with somebody and they say something, I'll say, um, I don't quite understand exactly what you're saying. Could you explain what you're saying? And I know some people find that an annoying because they know I'm not stupid. So they're like, how come you can't understand this? So you must be doing this to just annoy me. And I'm not, I'm doing it because I really want to understand what they mean when they say something. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, to me, it's a sign of respect to say, I, I respect you enough that I believe that you're trying to communicate something to me and that you're using the words that, 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 are, are the exact choices of yours. And, but it's, it's not really making that much sense to me. So could you explain it to me further? So then I can kind of figure out what that word is, what that word means. So that's what the translator uh, has to do. And here, like I said, the, the number two reason why, the number two place where you need to really, really make sure your words are exactly right. Uh, the number one place is when you're reading sacred literature, if in fact you believe that this sacred literature is God talking to you then that's even more important than, than uh, a, a good contract, okay? If God said to you, uh, you can go to heaven if you uh, bring me a bowl of uh, leafy green vegetables. Okay, so I bring a bowl of lettuce. Eh, sorry, you're going to hell. Because I meant spinach. Well, you, did, you just said leafy green. Well, when I say leafy green vegetables, I mean lettuce. And someone else comes and they say, uh, here, here, God, here's a bowl of cabbage. Uh, here's a bowl of kale. Okay. And, and so <laughs> it's, it makes a huge difference when we're talking about things like uh, uh, our, our spiritual forever. Those kinds of things make a real difference. So especially in sacred literature, it's important to make sure that we are we have, we have a pretty good idea that we're really getting a grasp on what these uh, words mean in the original languages in the in the text. And again, if you're not going to, uh, let's say, uh, Micah, you're reading a book on uh, uh, the, the originally the uh, the uh, uh, discourses of from the Pali Canon. Yes, from the Pali Canon. So the uh, the Buddha uh, uh, spoke in, uh, in in Pali, and so uh, absent absent uh, Micah learning Pali. He's going to have to trust the translation of the person he's reading the book from. Now, the person that, he, that wrote the book, probably, they may have done their own translations. They may have just uh, taken other people's translations. I have no idea. Okay. But um, uh, absent learning the original languages, what you need to do is, like I said, get several different translations. And then just read them and say, okay, I, I, I think I get what, the, the, what, what they all mean. So one, one translation has um, a set of meanings that look like, uh, I better use a different color here. Uh, one transla translation has uh, the word, uh, this word here, and another one has um, uh, this word here, and another one has, uh, it means this here, and then another one has, it means this here. Say, so, okay, what do they all have in common? They all have in common this right down here. So as long as I go with that, I'm pretty safe. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. As long yeah. as I go with that, and that's what I was doing with that other verse over there, that uh, they, 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 uh, they thought of him uh, as, as they do a group of naughty people. They thought of him in the same way they think of a group of naughty people. So that's what I was doing here. I was taking these different uh, uh, renderings of that verse, say, what are they all basically saying? Because then that will get you to that, okay? But again, in real life, we don't do that. We just, we just talk. But if you're going to translate from one language to another, especially sacred language, uh, you're going to have to do this. 
uh, you're going to have to take that word, which, by the way, could have how many meanings? This, uh, this word over here. Let's say over here we have Isaiah. How many, how many meanings did it say we had in there? Six, I think, right? And I'm going to take it over here to give it to Micah, uh, who uh, happens to speak in English. And, um, uh, and so, Sanskrit. And there were, so there were 90. Okay. So, but I'm going to have to pick words in my head. Got it? I have to pick words in my head to pick from. So, uh, because all right, I, I, need, I need to know what the, the word that Isaiah meant there, or used there. In my head, I got I to gotta find one of the, those list of 90 English words so that when it gets to Micah, it matches up so that him being a, 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 a standard English reader, he will probably have that synonym. Got it? So that's what right. happened. So it's, it's, it really, we, we go about our lives uh, talking and, and writing, and we don't usually think about any of this stuff. We just talk, right? We just talk. It really is a fairly complicated uh, uh, process. And the fact that we can we can communicate at all is uh, to me rather rather miraculous because because the the number of words that that you and I have in our heads and the different meanings of those words is is countless and yet we still get along okay so uh, the the principles that I put forth and how do you figure out then what word you're going to use. Uh, what, what the translator, what the word is going to use to translate this original word in Isaiah. So here we have the translator. He says, okay, I'm reading this word. Uh, actually, I'm not reading the word that's in Isaiah's head. I'm reading the word that he put out here uh, that was written down. So I'm looking at that written word, and then hopefully that written word will translate to uh, the same word in Micah's head. So how do we do that? That's this right here, okay? So uh, I got five uh, principles here, and some uh, uh, two of them have um, uh, five uh, subheadings and one have four. So first of all, time and place. Everything, so the words have semantic range, but context allows only for one meaning unless the author is consciously attempting to be vague. That can happen too, you know? Look, like if uh, you, you uh, come home uh, late and your mom says, where were you? Oh, I was at a friend's. That's too vague, <laughs> okay? Well, yeah, but that's because I don't want to tell you which friend I was at. I was at, uh, uh, I don't know, I was at uh, Dan Larson's house. And mom goes, you shouldn't be hanging out with Dan Larson. He was a, he's a naughty guy. Okay, so so I, I so I attempt to be vague. That he was the first guy that I knew of uh, in sixth grade. He got caught with some whiskey in his his uh, locker at school. <laughs> in sixth grade, Dang. what kind of a, what kind of oh. a naughty guy is that? Oh okay. my goodness! <laughs> That's even naughtier than Dustin. Yeah. Yeah. So he was really bad. He stole my eight track player. Did he really? Yes. Oh, out, of, out of your car? No, out of my apartment. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Dan. I wonder if he's still alive. I don't know. Okay. I, I felt sorry for him when he when his dad died. Yeah. He really did. Um. Anyway, so uh, uh, unless they're, we're we're going to assume that people aren't trying to be vague, that they're trying to communicate something, and so we look for. Uh, author intent, uh, and, and that intent is determined by context. And there's five different contexts that we go by. Five different contexts. And it says they're listed out synthetically, which means from, from big to little. Okay? And analytically means from little to big. This is synthetic, so it's from big to little. Okay, so you look at the historical context, the time and place it was written. Okay? And sometimes you don't need to do this. Like if I was to go back and read, I don't care. Um, oh, uh, what would be a good book to read? Um, oh, how about Moby Dick? Moby Dick was written uh, in the English language by Herman Melville back in, uh, I don't know, when did he write that? 1800s? Probably. Um, so uh, 
uh, you know, I, there, there might be some words in there if I go back and read Moby Dick that I don't know what they mean. Okay, so I'd have to go back and say, okay, what did he mean when he, when he chose this word? I'd have to go back and see, is, in, in that time and place, how was that word used? Okay, because it might be different today. So I have to go back to the historical context, the time and place of when the author wrote that down. Next, I go to the literary genre, the kind of writing that it was. Because we'll, we'll, we'll use different words depending on the kind of writing. We use different words depending on the person we're talking to, okay? So like if, uh, if um, uh, Dustin was, uh, was really mad at, at, at Beth, I don't know what's the naughtiest thing he would call her, uh, but maybe, uh, let's just say poopy butt. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was saying. <laughs> Beth, you poopy butt, why did you do that? Okay. Um, <laughs> That's the that's the phrase I use in uh, in my work when I'm uh, uh, mediating with people who are mad at each other because uh, they they start to get you know really mad and I say you know remember you know we have to treat each other res with respect here so the worst thing you can call each other is poopy butt then they laugh yeah I actually had a dream one time uh, taking place in my shop class in junior year of high school where like uh, this one person was talking to this one student that he didn't like and he was just like when you were poopy butt and then someone had then made a song about it with the xylophone and disco lights and it was so funny that i woke up at two o'clock in the morning laughing but my mom and <laughs> my mom and sister were still sleeping so it was like like a shut up no kidding he's dreaming of poopy butts <laughs> all righty so uh my, my point being that what you'll say in one, in, in one uh, setting is different than another setting. Depends on how you're writing. If, if uh, 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 Beth was writing a letter to her grandma, she would probably use a little bit different language than she would if she was writing a letter to her, her best friend from high school. Okay? She would. She'd use different language. Because, uh, uh, th th just because she would. Now, if she was, if she was, texting her best friend she'd use even different language than that because when texting there's a whole different subset that's a whole is all it's its own genre uh, in which in which we use words differently when we when we um when we text so you have to look at the genre what kind of writing is it that is being used here next then we the we need the the purpose of the writing so the thesis context why is this person writing this and you, that what are they? What's the the large context of what they're trying to do when they're when they're uh, sending this to me? Okay, so if a I don't care if somebody at work, uh, your boss at work, uh, sends you some some uh, document, um, you'll you'll want to know what's this document for? Why did they send it to me? What it is it? What is it? What it is that they're trying to to accomplish here when they sent this to me? And you'll want to know that, and that will help you decide. How to read it if you know the the uh the their the purpose in sending the writing to you secondly uh not secondly fourthly look at that i didn't capitalize the word writing there oh my gosh dustin saw that and said jim you're just re you're really just getting uh you're falling apart here of course i wrote this my uh by my uh, by way of uh an apology i wrote this probably 20 years ago <laughs> so, <laughs> so i don't have any don't have any uh, uh excuse for it okay i was a sound mind 20 years ago okay so the, so we have the so you have the purpose of the of the entire writing and then you have the theme of the section that you're writing the section within which okay because uh if, if it's an extended writing it has a meaning for the whole thing but then it uh, typically they'll go through certain parts or going to work through uh, 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 parts of that writing and so there might be a separate theme on that particular subsection and you need to know that and then the topic of the paragraph because words in a paragraph relate to the paragraph they have to and so to really understand what a word means in a paragraph you have to understand what the paragraph means and then finally the sentence context the meaning of that individual sentence so you get five different contexts for every single word. Does this sound like fun? Yeah.
Oh, no, it doesn't. You're lying to me. Okay. Especially, uh, go, go read the Mahabharata and, and uh, tell me that sounds fun. I don't want to read the Mahabharata. I just want to read the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> well, the Bhagavad Gita you can read in a, in a half an hour. And the Mahabharata will take you a month uh, to read that. Okay. Bhagavad Gita is easy. Okay. But wow, if, you had, if you had to do this for the uh, Mahabharata, every single word you had to break it down to these five contexts, guess what you would do? You'd quit reading after the first, uh, the first couple of pages. This is just too much work. Okay, but if it's something that's super important, then uh, it's a good idea to do this. If in fact there's there's something that's that someone has ch uh, challenging or something is asserting that a particular writing says that you don't really think it means that, this is how you this is how you go through and, and figure that out so that you can in your mind not you're trying to be right you're trying to be uh, you're trying to be what um, uh, you're trying to be respectful of this person. You're not trying to be right. You're trying to be respectful. This person intended on saying something and I respect them enough. I want to make sure that I'm not putting words into their mouth. That's what it comes down to. I don't care about being right. I care about respecting the author. Got it? What was that? What was that look to uh, Justin for? I was <laughs> laughing at Micah, not in a mean way. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm just. Is he, I'm is just he entertaining silly. you guys over there? Is that what he's doing? I must have missed that. No, oh, okay. So I'm entertaining Beth then. I guess. Okay. okay, you should you should charge for entertainment. Okay. So what am I gonna do? Charge her five bucks for what I just did? Is it worth five I mean, bucks? I could do that technically, yeah. Yeah, you could do that, certainly. And, and I, I mean, after all, I do my career aspirations are for the entertainment industry, so I might be doing that. Well, I will be doing that someday. So, Dustin, in uh, any of the classes that uh, you sat under me in college, mm -hmm. did I ever uh, stop and uh, I'd say something super funny, and and the, the students were laughing, and I stopped and I'd say, you know, I should charge for stand-up comedy. Did I ever do that with you? Not that I recall. No, I, I do that quite <laughs> often. And I say something that's really funny and most of the class laughs and I just stop. Yeah. I should be charging for stand-up comedy, you know? <laughs> I should charge extra for that because I'm making yeah, this Yeah, but I kind of feel like uh, people are funnier when like they when they don't affirm their funniness. Yeah. Oh, I agree. I agree completely. And in, in terms of the Tao Te Ching, if you affirm yourself, you will not shine. I don't know how to process that right at this moment. Okay, if you affirm yourself, you shall not. It takes time, yeah. Yeah. What, what, what immediately came to mind was the Apostle Paul saying, do not think too highly of yourself. But, there he, you also, go. but he also says, don't think too lowly of yourself. You should think of yourself the, uh, appropriately. You know, like, like uh, my brother Dan can say, you know, I'm not the most handsome guy in the world, but I'm pretty good looking. Mm. okay that would be an appropriate way to look at himself okay if he walked around saying oh i'm really ugly i'm really ugly then guess what he wouldn't be looking at himself correctly either right mm. yeah so look at yourself appropriately and accurately that's how that's how the apostle paul said otherwise we're gonna we're, we're either gonna uh uh be uh, uh, uh full of ourselves egotistical or we're gonna walk around with self-loathing neither of those things is healthy for us okay so the next thing on here is the denotative definition over the connotative. And um, I think I'm actually going to wait till next week to start into this. Because this is a, a pretty good size uh, something to discuss. And um, I know I'm not even going to even get a, a, probably a tenth of the way into it right now. So I don't want to start. I'll just say... Uh, and then we'll just uh, uh, wrap it up for tonight, that um, the, these two definitions uh, are, are, these two ways of defining uh, are extremely important. And when we, if we're going to be a good communicator and if we're going to really read well what a, a, a word, uh, what, a, what a writing is saying, we need to have these things in our head. Uh, we need to understand uh, what they are, these two things. And most people that I, who haven't taken the class from me, if I, if I met a thousand people and they'd never taken a class from me, uh, I would say they don't know the difference between these two things. 
a denotative definition and a connotative definition. And I, well, I never took a class from you, and I actually knew those were knew those words before I even met you. Oh well, that's because that's because you're super smart. Okay, <laughs> but most or people, rather, I would say that it's because I was taught by a woman who also knew those terms. Okay, that's helpful. Yeah. But um, you've uh, attempted to use a fallacy on me, the uh, uh, faulty, re the false refutation of the uh, general rule, uh, because uh, it is still true that most people don't know that. You used, you used a single counterexample, uh, 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 but in fact, that doesn't challenge or in any way diminish my claim that most people don't know what this means. That's true. Got it? Yeah. Okay. So uh, next time, I will... Uh, start here. I'm going to work down through these other contexts and trying to figure out the meanings of words. So,